Hello dear friends and net aspirants, welcome back to High Point again. We were learning about new historicism. Today in this video we will see yet another thinker related to the theory, Louis Montrose. And before digging into the video, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, subscribe to it and also follow me on Instagram, visit my website if you are seriously looking for some online study materials for your NTA, UGC, Net, JRF, English Language and Literature Paper 2. We have arranged everything systematically in a comprehensible simple manner in the website go and visit the link to the website is there in the description box you can use chrome if you are logging from uh, f, uh, from your phone okay and um, yeah let me know your impressions if you are interested to join our family as a student and you want to know the free bonuses and what all things we are providing for our students you can use this whatsapp number or use instagram id to reach out to me okay about louis montrose as a new historicist let's move on to the video let's have an introduction first of all so this is louis montrose louis adrian montrose was an american see remember his nationality american literary theorist and academic scholar his scholarship addressed a wide variety of literary historical and theoretical theoretical topics and issues and significantly shaped contemporary studies of renaissance poetics english renaissance theater and elizabethan first so you know the uh, literature related to elizabethan first or historical documents that we can see about elizabethan first okay so his main scholarship uh, held in these areas okay Mondros was an influenced early proponent of new historicism especially as it applied to the study of early modern english literature and culture so he applied uh, the theories he was an early uh, a proponent of new historicism and he applied new historicism when he was studying early modern english literature and culture he was a professor of english literature the university of california san diego now Moving on about his major concepts, according to Louis Montrose, the theory of new historicism is a reciprocal concern with the historicity of text and the textuality of history. See, this you need to remember. Okay, whenever you hear new historicism, this is the first thing you have to remember. Historicity of the text and the textuality of the history. Okay, history is textualized and, you know, has text is also a historical component okay so there is a reciprocal concern see a a literary text can be read in the background of historical historical text see in new historicism historical text or uh, you know neither historical text nor a literary text uh, given special importance two of them or both of them have given equal weightage so you can see history in a text you can read that text from the historical background and history is also just like a novel just like a text it's not objective it's not away from any subjective matters history in history too you can find selected events in historical document just like you have a uh, you have in a novel okay one can interpret it by taking history as a dynamic force see history is not a static thing it's a dynamic force because it, it is not said to have any fixed objective fact you cannot find in a history you will feel that history is more objective but history is written by persons history is written by just like a text is written so it is not away it is not having any fixed objective facts okay but it should be dealt like a literature with which it interacts such as text which must be interpreted so just like a novel must get interpreted the same way historical text also get interpreted because text is like a historical document and is also a historical document is just like a text on the other hand a piece of literature is said to be discourse that consists of cultural construct in the historical context of the specified era so historical you know literature is also considered to be as a discourse as a as a historical text like a historical text itself because it contains a literary text contain cultural constructs in the historical context literary text contains 
a historical context you know in that historical context certain uh, certain cultural constructs are made about a specific era so you take a novel of um, indian novels there will be a historical context there will be according to that historical context cultural construction will be there you know and also take the example of victorian age novels it's a historical construct there will be a historical context in that background cultural construction will be done inside that text about that specific era you can if you see that if you analyze a novel you can see that historical context that cultural linguistic construct of that specific era and you can understand history from that way just like a, just like from a historical text now louis montrose in his work professing the renaissance the poetics and politics of culture claims uh, claimed that new historicism deals with the textuality of history and the historicity of text so this quotation was made by louis montrose textuality of history and the historicity of text in his work professing the renaissance the poetics and politics of culture while historicity of text refers to the cultural specificity and the social embeddment of all modes of writing see whatever you are writing not only the novel not only a scientific uh, work any other writing that you are writing which will have a cultural specificity and social embed embeddedness okay by sitting in a cultural background in a historical background you can write any text any mode of writing so historicity of text means cultural specificity and social embeddment of all modes of writing the rootedness of a text in the social historical political and cultural ambience of its production so whatever be that text whatever you are writing how far however you are writing uh, a seemingly objective document of something maybe scientific theories or uh, mathematical things or whatever be the whatever mode of writing every other kind of writing is rooted in social historical political and cultural ambience of its production if you are writing today then what is the social historical political and cultural ambience of this time that will affect your writing then textuality of history what does that mean refers to the fictionality and constructedness of history so most of us believe that history is objective but history is also constructed just like a fictional novel so the textuality of history is referred to the fictionality and constructedness of history which foucault on his archaeological approach to history as an archive explic explicates arguing that old historians erases and even out all even out all inconsistencies contradictions and discontinuous uh, discontinuities of actual history and develop a coherent and consistent historical narrative complying with the dominant ideology of the state so according to the dominant ideology of the state who is the dominant group and what is their ideology according to that the old historians they will erase or they will even out the bulging things the uneven things inconsistencies and contradictions and discontinuity discontinuities all get erased or all get even out according to the dominant ideology of the dominant group the old historians are, have done that's how we feel a kind of linear history where some people got more power some people get more inclusiveness some people get less inclusiveness or no representation at all so foucault also explicate explicate this in uh, his archaeological approach towards history now there is no such thing as objective history so there is no such thing as objective history because a historical document is also a kind of mode of writing because history is a narrative which like language is produced in a context so history is a narrative it is written it's a mode of narrative and it is produced in a context and is governed by the social economy see history how history is get, get con constructed because while history is get con constructed it is governed by social economic and political interest of the dominant group or institution if the dominant group is not approving it then that that text will get non existent that's what the old historians did 
This approach of new historicism is parallel to Derrida's notion that reality is textualized and Foucault's idea of social structures as determined by dominant discursive practices. See, the new historicism, the objective, uh, the non-existence of objective history it is parallel to Derrida's notion of reality is textualized reality is never a reality it's not objective but it is affected by various things we cannot see any fixed reality so that idea of Derrida and also Foucault's idea of social structures as determined by dominant discursive practices. So new historicism is parallel with Derrida's and Foucault's these ideas. Thus new historicists aim simultaneously to understand the work through its historical context and to understand cultural and intellectual history through literature. So these two things simultaneously at the same time they are doing. What are they doing? New historicists, new historicists, they through a work they wanted to understand or they are understanding a work through its social historical context in which it was written and they also try to understand the cultural and intellectual history through literature so these are the two things that they are doing whenever they analyze a text whatever be that text as new stories uh, you have to do these two things now Let's see the major text written by Louis Montrose, Celebration and Insinuation, Sir Philip Sidney and the Motives of Elizabethan Courtship, published in 1990, Spencer's Domestic Domain, Poetry, Property and the Early Modern Subject, published in 1996, The Purpose of Playing, Shakespeare and the Cultural Politics of the Elizabethan Theatre, 1999, of Gentlemen and Shepherds, The Politics of Elizabethan Pastoral Form, published in 2001, The Subject of Elizabeth, Authority, Gender and Representation, published in 2006, Spencer and the Elizabethan Political Imaginary, published in 2002. So he has come up with many other papers, uh, you know, theoretical papers and all. I have just mentioned the important ones. Read the titles two, three times so that you remember them. Okay. Now, I think that's all about Louis Montrose. This was a short video, but we have sufficiently discussed about the major concepts and uh, uh, theories that Louis Montrose put forwarded as a new historicist. If you have any doubts, queries uh, and uh, uh, questions, you can WhatsApp me in this number or comment that below in the comment section. If you liked this video, press the like button and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram and visit my website for more contents related to NTA, UGC, Net Share of English Language, English Language and Literature Paper 2. Okay. Meet you in the next video session. Until then, stay tuned to High Point and be happy. Strive for the best in your life, guys. Thank you for watching this video. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.